This video will demonstrate how to fabricate a centrifugally cast piping system. These are the tools you will need. A handheld skill saw with either an abrasive or diamond tip blade or a carbide embedded blade. Never use a tooth blade with a saw such as this. Other acceptable saws are chop saws and a matabo. You'll also need an emery cloth with 36 to 60 grit. In addition, you'll need your typical pipe fitting tools such as a level, square, torpedo level, and a sharpie marking pen. Once the joint is made with catalyzed adhesive, the heat gun will be used to speed up the cure of the fillet. Also, an electric heat blanket by Smith Fibercast that is thermostatically controlled is required. And don't forget clean, lint-free dry rags. Optional tools you can use on pipe ranging from 8 inch to 14 inch are a 5 inch electric grinder with a 36 to 60 grit grinding disc with a rubber backing pad, a 2 inch sanding drum on a high RPM drill motor, and a 1 inch sanding drum on an electric pencil grinder. These can be used instead of the shoeshine method shown later in the video. There are two items that you want to avoid using. Never use a tiger disc or a flapper wheel. These two tools will polish the pipe instead of supplying the abrasion you need for a rougher, more absorbent surface. First, inspect the pipe for any shipping damage. Get the fitting takeoff dimensions, cut lengths, and fabrication instructions from the F6080 installation handbook. Measure and mark your cut length. For Z Core pipe, it is very important that you bring the pipe temperature up to 100 degrees F plus on the pipe ID before cutting. With epoxy and vinyl ester, the pipe temperature should be at least 55 degrees before cutting. Now that the pipe has been cut, sand the pipe and fitting. Slide the fitting onto the pipe and mark the pipe for the socket depth. Then, put an additional mark a half inch further for sanding beyond the socket depth. With a 36 to 60 grit emery cloth, use the shoeshine method to remove the glaze. Sand it thoroughly, then with a clean rag, remove the dust. Be sure to protect the sanded area of the pipe from dust, dirt, oil and grease, and water. Do not use any kind of solvents to clean the pipe. Once you have the surface sanded and contaminant free, do not touch the pipe with your bare hands. Fitting sockets are sanded during manufacturing, but it is necessary to freshen the socket surface to eliminate contamination prior to use by sanding with a 36 to 60 grit emery cloth. Always make your fabrication as soon after sanding as possible. If you wait at least two hours after your pipe and fitting have been sanded, you'll need to sand them again to get rid of moisture in a high humidity area or dust that may have settled on them during that time. It is imperative that you mix and apply the adhesive as quickly as possible after sanding the socket. Once you have sanded and wiped the dust from the fitting, you need to dry fit it by placing the fitting onto the pipe to make sure it is dimensionally correct. Now you are ready to mix the adhesive. When you mix and apply the adhesive, it is necessary to wear rubber gloves and chemical splash goggles. This package contains all you will need. A can of Part A, a spatula for spreading the adhesive that's also angled for making your fillets, a wooden tongue depressor for mixing, the appropriate catalyst, and an instruction sheet. The same information can also be found in the F6080 manual including instructions for cold weather installations below 70 degrees and for hot weather installations above 100 degrees. For temperatures between 40 and 80 degrees add the entire tube of the enclosed catalyst to the vinyl ester part A. The catalyst is a red color and you'll know the adhesive is mixed thoroughly when there is a consistent color throughout. 
Be sure to scrape the bottom and corner of the can while mixing. Now that the color is consistent, you are ready to apply the adhesive. Epoxy adhesive kits used for Z-Core and RB must be brought to a temperature of 85 to 95 degrees before mixing. When mixing the epoxy kits, mix all of the hardener part B with all of the base part A. Again, mix until the color is uniform and consistent throughout. First, apply a thin coat of adhesive to the sanded surface. Then coat the end of the pipe with catalyzed adhesive. This protects the end from possible chemical attack. Now, apply a thick coat of adhesive about one half to one quarter inch over the thin layer just applied. Next, apply a thin layer of adhesive as was done on the pipe, forcing the adhesive down into the roughened surface that was created by sanding. As was done on the pipe, go back and apply a thicker coat of adhesive. Apply about a sixteenth inch thick coating to the inside of the fitting. Now you're ready to install the fitting. When you install a fitting, use steady, even pressure until it bottoms out. Now square up the fitting to the pipe. Don't clean up the adhesive until you get everything square and level. Make sure you support all of your fittings, including flanges. Once you have the fitting set and square with the pipe, you're ready to clean up the adhesive. Next, to make the fillet, use the putty knife included in the kit. It has a 45 degree bevel on it. Put it on the flange, butting it lightly up to the flange, and scrape the adhesive off, being careful not to push on the flange or fitting as you scrape. Next, accelerate the cure of the adhesive with a heat gun. Keep the heat gun moving about 6 to 10 inches away from the fillet portion. The fillet must be hard before attaching a fitting to the other end. With flanges, once the fillet is hard, we are ready to put the heat blanket inside. It is recommended that you post cure every joint with a heat blanket. Without a heat blanket, vinyl ester adhesive joints require 24 hours to cure when the temperature is between 70 to 100 degrees F plus or minus. The same is true with Z-Core and RB. A heat blanket will accelerate the curing process. Flange joints require heating from the inside. Before inserting the heat blanket, take note where the thermostat is located. It is the bump. For a flange such as this, roll up the heat blanket with a thermostat wrapped on the inside so it can sense the temperature and regulate it. Take the Velcro strips off and insert the blanket. Then plug it in. Refer to the instructions when you apply the heat blanket to determine how much time is required for each size. The instructions and the F6080 handbook define times for post-curing fitting joints for each pipe size. On all fittings other than flanges, such as elbows and tees, you will wrap the blanket around the outside of the joint, making sure the thermostat is inside the roll facing the blanket. Refer to the 6080 handbook and the adhesive instruction sheets.